Hello and welcome to our panel today on cloud security and password safety. My name is Gina Clark. I'm the editor in chief of the FinTech Times. And today we're talking about cybercrime, our theme for the month of January. Recent high profile data leaks and fines have led to a greater awareness of security protocols in the public consciousness. But with remote working now a new norm, what should businesses and consumers need to be aware of when working online? Today, we're talking not just about keeping personal data safe, but also securing corporate information while working in a home environment. In this webinar, our experts will discuss the digital advances in security and password safety, while also offering helpful tips for keeping accounts secure. We've got some great panelists today, so without further ado, let me introduce them. Uh, Jean-Paul Smets is the founder and CEO of RapidSpace. Um, do you want to introduce yourself, Jean-Paul? Yeah, so we created Rapid Space about a year ago, and what we wanted to do is something we call hyper open cloud, which means uh, cloud computing where everything is open source, even a billing platform, and even the training procedures of our staff, so that we get full transparency, and that has an impact on security. Certainly. Uh, thank you for that. And our next guest is Gary Orenstein, the Chief Customer Officer of Bitwarden. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Sure. Thanks very much, Gina. My name is Gary Orenstein, and I uh, work at Bitwarden. Bitwarden is a company that makes an open source password manager for both individuals as well as teams and large organizations so that uh, individuals can manage their own credentials for various websites and logins but also provide the ability to share those credentials securely amongst members of their team. So it's a full circle of credential management from individuals to uh, organizations. And I'm guessing you've both been very busy over the last 12 months uh, as the global pandemic has, has moved on and most of us are still here at home. Um, it would be really good to get an understanding of, of how you've seen the last 12 months and how your company and thoughts and direction has evolved. Um, Gary, do you want to start? Sure. I think what we saw first uh, collectively is that um, the initial thing everybody needed to do was communicate via video uh, because it's uh, sort of the best replacement for being in person. And you know, we saw what happened with companies like Zoom and the adoption of these kind of uh, communication technologies. And so that was step one. I think uh, step two, which we're still in the middle of, is people realizing the infrastructure that's needed to make people successful to not just uh, collaborate with each other, but to do so securely. And as well, as people have moved from being primarily on corporate networks in the office to home networks where they're often managing their own uh, setup, the importance of how you manage your activities online has only increased. And so we've seen, uh, understandably, a big pickup in how people are looking at managing their own credentials and managing company credentials in a way that's safe and secure. Hmm. John Paul, how have things changed for Rapid Space? Well, I, I would say I'm completely in line with what Gary is saying. And and what we've seen is with the increased use of online services and cloud, there's also been a, a tremendous growth of distrust towards conventional cloud providers. And the fact that there has been leaks, including very big leaks recently of passwords and credentials. And since companies are facing at the same time the need to adopt cloud for competitive reasons, but at the same time a greater fear so it's depending on those companies' way of managing credentials. And I'm actually very happy to see what Gary is doing because that's completely in line with uh, what our motto is like uh, in rapid space, we refuse to store ourselves any credential of our customers. We believe that customers should manage by themselves their credentials because that's the only way that we are not going to give away to secret services of China or France or US some companies' credentials. And we actually need, as a complement of rapid space, uh, software like Bitwarden. And, and, you know, on that kind of security aspect, is that something that you think is missing due to education? Um, or is it that people are being forced to stay more online now than they ever have done in the past? Um, what do you think is, is behind that? 
there's a problem of convenience. Mm -hmm. Letting somebody else manage your password and asking that person to send again a new one or reset that password is extremely convenient as a user. But, and people have to choose between convenience and security usually. But now that there has been so much distrust towards the traditional way of letting somebody else manage your password for you, finally we see the market ready to take a bit more care of handling things by themselves. What do you think is that, Gary? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, uh, in the context of when being an employee in an office, uh, you often have a chance to rely on your IT team and they're often able to help you. And sometimes it's as easy as walking down the hall to ask for a favor. Uh, in this new world, it, it's not nearly as easy and people are realizing that um, they have to take some of this into their own hands. Uh, it is a balance of security and convenience. Um, but I think a, a big part of it is that uh, people need to understand how these type of password managers work. And, and, and that, that's, that's it, it takes a little bit of time. And, uh, you know, just in a nutshell, what happens when you use a password manager is all of your data remains encrypted with the primary password that, that you manage and you own and you control, sort of your key. Uh, and so when whatever password manager you're using, uh, you know, they don't, they don't even know your password. They're storing the encrypted uh, blob of information. And so just having people understand the end-to-end -end encryption models that allow them to generate long, complex, random and unique passwords, which is sort of what the industry experts recommend to stay safe, uh, being able to use a tool to help you do that, knowing that that tool is safe and trusted uh, because the provider of the tool can't even see what the password is, only you can see what the password is. These type of things take uh, a little bit of time to uh, digest and, and be understood. But as that happens, uh, what, what we see is the, the freedom that people feel that they have after they've adopted these tools. Uh, the idea of signing up for a new website is no longer a challenge of, oh, I got to think of a password or being sent a request to reset your password is no longer a big deal because uh, password manager tools have the ability to generate uh, unique passwords. So I think a big part of it is this balance of security and convenience. But I also think that with the right training and education, uh, the convenience um, actually improves significantly and the peace of mind improves significantly to where people are not just safer and more secure, but feel more capable in managing their online activities. Do you think there have been any kind of companies over the last year that have excelled in, in how they uh, support their staff and teach their staff, especially, you know, with us being such a global industry uh, these days, you know, we have uh, big corporate companies and also smaller ones with staff in very different circumstances across the world. Um, is there anyone you think has had a, a really good approach or would like to highlight? Uh, I found it. Oh, go ahead, uh, Jean-Paul. Oh, I'm so I would say I don't know any such company, but I know who I would ask if I wanted to know. Yeah, there's a very interesting company in Germany called NitroPad and NitroKey. They produce open source physical device to replace passwords. And I'm currently adopting this for myself because I feel it's convenient and removes completely the need of password. And it seems that business is growing very fast with uh, open source HSM, open source uh, uh, tokens. So I think they are the ones who know who is doing great improvements. And I guess everything's changed so much that these new ways of managing our passwords, you know, we've gone from sort of uh, basic encryption to two-factor authentication and now uh, password manager tools. Um, it, what's next i guess in terms of password safety and cloud adoption do you think um gary maybe start with you on that one sure and and i'll and i'll i'll talk about what's next but i just wanted to jump back for a second on the companies that we see who are making the most progress here sure. uh, which are the companies who are recognizing that 
people need, their employees need training and education as well as the tools. Um, and the companies that are having honest discussions with folks about phishing, which I'm sure we'll talk about later, uh, <laughs> the companies who are having open discussions with people about what is the best way to manage your credential? And, and what is this credential? Is this a company credential? And should it be stored in the uh, company area of our uh, credential management tool? Or is it a personal credential that should be stored in your own personal vault? For example, today, uh, I could ask the question, uh, what is your GitHub credential? Is that a personal credential? But you use it to collaborate on code with your company you know, it's kind of a mix, uh, similar with LinkedIn. LinkedIn is based on the identity of the individual, uh, but people often use it in a work environment. And so the companies we see that are making the most progress are the ones who recognize that credential management now splits uh, and spans across the individual and the company. And they're, they're, it, it's a gray zone. Uh, different companies will have different procedures and that's great. Uh, they just need to be discussed and um, you know, brought to light within the context of the company. To jump forward to your question about what's new, every day there's something new to make these uh, solutions more convenient for people. Some of the most um, you know, more recent things that are, are what we call fan favorites in the world of Bitwarden are things like biometrics mm -hmm. to help with logging in and uh, saving you time there or things like autofill uh, to further save time. Uh, you know, that we have a, a number of people who, you know, really want to have the minimum number of keystrokes or the minimum number of mouse clicks. And so there are a number of ways that uh, through these type of um, features, the, the whole experience is getting significantly easier for people. Definitely. And you've agreed to Jean, Jean Paul? <laughs> so a, a new technology we've seen and we like, uh, a bit curious that uh, a laptop does erase completely at every restart. Oh. So, and this way, if you go through any custom, even if you go through Chinese custom, and if you ask to show what you have on your laptop and whatever the way you connect to any online site, the laptop is empty. And this way, there's no password invite and there's no way to access any service. We've seen more and more people have this kind of self-erasing device whenever they cross border. And I guess, you know, even looking at things like virtual private networks, do you think these sort of tools are giving people the, um, the uh, I guess, the protection that they're looking for when they're looking uh, for security? I don't think so because, um, um, I would say more and more services people use for enterprise are HTTP, HTTPS based. And VPNs are more and more actually a tool to attract people that suddenly behave differently. If you know how secret services are working, the first thing they do, is they try to detect if your behavior is different from others. And if your first thing you do at the hotel is to connect to some VPN, for example, to cross the this will trigger an alarm at the local police. So it is better to behave as everybody if you don't want to be targeted. Then use HTTPS and use certificates. And mm -hmm. this on the laptop for which you know what software is running on it. And if you do all those steps, it's pretty hard to track what you are doing. Especially if you use your own self-signed certificates with your own authority of signature. And what about if you've been victim to a leak in the past um, and maybe you're kind of more protective um, than usual? Is there something you can do to check whether your details have been leaked? And I guess password change is the obvious solution, but something going forward that makes you feel more confident when using the internet. The, the problem I see when you start searching for leaks is first, uh, is your system in a state as it should be? Mm. Because if there's been a leak, probably you've been attacked. Been attacked. How do you know you are, for example, starting the right Linux kernel with the right init early and the right binaries? And this is the problem of verifying the, uh, the system you are starting on. Uh, this is actually still a difficult problem. Uh, one of the interesting technologies that emerged on that topic this year is the Fuchsia 
open source operating system by Google that solved this problem very well. On the Linux side, there are tools like Dracker. But for me, if you have a leak, the first thing to do is make sure your infrastructure is as it should be. Because if one part has been compromised and you don't solve that part, you will have another leak. Definitely. Gary, do you want to add to that? Sure, I agree with Jean-Paul. You have to make sure that the state of your infrastructure is in a good place uh, uh, before you, you know, begin to, to do these further investigations. Um, on the credential management side and password management side, uh, there are tools available and uh, Bitwarden has these as well, where you can check to, to match if your password uh, matches some of the data breaches that have occurred. And this happens through third party databases. This also happens in a way where the passwords are compared not by comparing the actual password, but by comparing the, the term is called the hash of the password. So it's, it's scrambled in a way so that uh, the original passwords are not really uh, identifiable or shown, but the pattern is matchable. And so by running these reports, you can see if one of the passwords you used has been compromised in a data breach where that data made it to uh, the web or the dark web. Of course, what this will highlight very quickly for many people, uh, and we're human beings, so this is normal, uh, you'll see that many people reuse the same password uh, in many different places and a password report uh, is um, one of the way, one of the things that'll bring that to light. Uh, many, as I mentioned, many password managers have this capability. Uh, Google has been promoting uh, their version of it recently. So because of their reach, it's been getting a lot of attention and people will look and say, goodness, I have, you know, 50 passwords that were compromised or hundred passwords that were compromised. Usually it's a few that were reused that were compromised. And again, that goes back to uh, the best advice that the experts recommend, which is to use a unique password for every website or service that you interact with. Of course, doing that and remembering that as a human being is nearly impossible. And therefore that is what uh, brings on the, the need and the assistance and the convenience of, of using software, which is really good at that to help manage credentials. And when we're kind of thinking about working from home and protecting not only our own personal IT infrastructure, but also potentially ones that have been loaned to us by a company or a corporate, um, are there any kind of top tips from both of you that you would give when setting up your own, um, own infrastructure? Um, Jean-Paul, do you want to start with that? Sorry, I didn't catch the end of the question. Uh, um, do you have any suggestions for people how to keep their own infrastructure safe especially if they're working on anything sensitive from a company level? Hmm. That's a terrible question. Um, what I observe is uh, people who really want to keep their infrastructure completely, such as military, just don't connect to internet. And people who really want to keep secrets just don't use IT. They take paper and pen. And although that sounds extreme, uh, this is what I'm observing in real life. And that gives the idea that maybe you don't need to put everything on your infrastructure. Maybe you could put just 99% on your infrastructure, but if something is really secret, just don't put it on IT. Sure. And I mean, the one thing that we have, well, the one problem that we have, I guess, is that for some countries, you know, going back into the office or, or even meeting up uh, for work purposes, it's just not been possible. Um, but I guess projects still have to go on. Is there any uh, ways they could um, think about doing this in a safe way online, perhaps? I would consider um, tools such as the mm. uh, If I had to exchange a secret online, with someone else and who is not super expert. And I have no way, for example, to exchange GPG fingerprints because I never meet the person at first. Then I would probably request that person to take a clean phone or a clean Linux machine 
install a software called Delta Chat that's been used in North Korea and Iran. To, it's been sponsored by a US foundation, actually. And it does automatic encrypting of the first message that's being exchanged between two people. So if they exchange one small message, then the next step is encrypted. And it's one of the, uh, I would say, simplest and hardest tool to break that is used by, um, I would say, journalists in mm -hmm. sensitive countries. So it's called Delta Chat. And I guess other basic encryption software is a must, regardless of, of what you're doing. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's encryption software, but the key is it's convenient. There's nothing to configure. Yeah. And the problem with uh, encryption is many people have a problem to understand how to configure it, which creates a, reduces the number of people who can be reached with that technology. And those guys who did also crypt and Delta Chat had this in mind. And it has been used in North Korea, in Iran, in many places for whistleblowers to send information in a safe way. Okay. And then Gary, your top tips, I guess, for home infrastructure. Well, I always advise people to start small. Uh, sometimes when you talk about uh, using a password manager, people are uh, overwhelmed by thinking about that they have to do everything at once. And it's quite the opposite. Uh, whether you want to send uh, a single encrypted message with a tool like Delta Chat or some of the other ones that are available, or you want to start managing your passwords, you can start with one. Uh, for individuals, I often recommend just doing that. Uh, download the tool. Uh, Bitwarden is available for free for individuals forever. Uh, maybe store your uh, favorite online newspaper password. It's not mission critical. Uh, and try that across a couple of devices. Change that password and learn how that process works. And then you can add more over time. In the context of a company, uh, whoever the champion is going to be, sometimes that's the IT team, sometimes it's the manager of uh, a new group, uh, sometimes it's the person who's most passionate about security in the company. Whoever that may be, uh, get started and uh, you know, launch a trial or, or launch a small organization and experiment with something non-critical to start so you have some familiarity and get comfortable. What we've seen over time is that once people start to use uh, Bitwarden as an individual or as a team, it has a natural growth and affinity because people see the benefit and the convenience as well as the security and it builds from there naturally. And when it comes to um, to password safety, you mentioned trying to, to change your password. How often do you think we should be changing our passwords? Well, there's different opinions on that. Uh, we like the uh, directions that come uh, in the United States from uh, an organization called NIST, N-I-S-T, National Institute of Standards and Technologies. And while it was recommended uh, quite some time ago to have regular password changes, this is a this is something that has changed this policy and this advice has changed significantly to where the experts recommend that you spend more time creating a long unique password for that service than worry about changing it uh, so uh, we still have people who ask us about how frequently you can change your password if you want to change it frequently you can but I'll tell you that if you have a randomly generated long password just for that website, uh, the chances of that being breached are low. And then the chances of that password impacting any other service you use is zero. Mm -hmm. So the changing password things is something that was prevalent a number of years ago. It's no longer a recommended practice, although you know, it still lingers in our discussions and vocabulary. But the number one thing I would say is don't worry about changing passwords, worry about making long, complex, random and unique passwords for every site that you visit. And is this something that, um, that you know, IT teams will have to get their head around? I mean, I'm sure we've all been part of an office where you're prompted to change your password every few months. Is this kind of a legacy infrastructure? Is it, do we just need to look forward now? Yeah, uh, there's still a lot of 
places in our software infrastructure where this requirement to change every 90 days is, is just still there and uh, it, it takes time to move forward. So I, I think we will see that uh, requirement uh, decrease in importance as people put a greater importance on the length and complexity of the original password you use. Of course, no website can tell you that you used that password somewhere else except for your password manager. Password manager can help remind you uh, that you've used a credential in multiple places and therefore you might want to change it because you've reused it, not because you need to change it, you know, every 90 days. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, we're coming to the end, last five minutes of the session. Um, so maybe we could just uh, focus on some um, more tips and suggestions for anybody watching. Um, Jean-Paul, when it comes to cloud security and password safety, do you have any last ideas that you want to share with us? I think the, the key idea for us is uh, if you can stop using passwords, do it wherever you can. If not, consider a password manager such as Bitwarden. And so we are using certificate as much as we can. And for the places we can't, we'll have to look at a password manager. And I guess if you're browsing online, you need to look for those certificates and make sure that they're in place. That must be a kind of a, a checklist that we all should go through, I guess. Mm, sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, uh, yeah. so, so when using uh, online websites, to make sure they have a certificate is... Uh, when we use online websites, if they are corporate websites, mm -hmm. we can move them to certificate-based authentication on both okay. sides. Then what we use is a PKI instead of a password manager. So if it's our own infrastructure, we tend to eliminate passwords and replace them with certificates and an open source PKI. But if we're using public websites such as LinkedIn or Amazon, then there's no other way than using a proper password manager. Excellent, thank you, that's great. And Gary, any last words from you? Yeah, I agree with uh, what John Paul said that there are a number of cases where you can simplify the process when uh, you know it's a company related um, service that you're logging into where you've got some control over both ends. Uh, but, but most of us are operating in a world where we uh, are just finding the best service to get the job done. Uh, you know, this whole rise of what people have called the consumerization of IT, or sometimes people call it shadow IT. Uh, people want to get their job done. If there's a service out there that's going to help them, uh, they're likely to sign up for it. And that new service may or may not be connected to the company's SSO, single sign-on infrastructure, may or may not be capable of handling certificates, like Jean-Paul said. So uh, those are the cases where this uh, password management becomes uh, critical. I think the biggest tip for me is uh, recognize that this is a full circle uh, password management. We're all the chief technologists in our home world. There is no other person around. So password management has a big impact on how we operate our, our daily personal lives. Uh, and it also ha has always had a big impact on our corporate lives and they're connected. And there's, there's no way to completely separate the, the habits and the practices you have in your personal life from the habits that you have in the uh, work life. There's overlap. They're different, but there's a lot of overlap. So that's why we think it's important not just to you know, provide a solution for businesses, but also for individuals and to make the individual service free so that there is no barrier to entry from a financial perspective. And then that helps make everybody more secure when we're combining good digital hygiene at home, good digital hygiene at work, understanding those environments and putting ourselves and our family and our colleagues in the best position to be safe and secure online. And I guess one final question for you both, uh, 2021, are we gonna see more big public data leaks or do you think most companies will have got their act together by now? We'll see data leaks worse and worse and worse. The next kind of data leaks that we're going to see are leaks about your personal health data mm. because all governments are pushing 
health data to the cloud. So soon you'll know if your neighbor has some psychological disease. Yeah. You should expect horrible things like that to happen. So it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. Gary? I think that's the unfortunate state. Uh, and the, it will, they, we're going to see it. And the only thing you can do as an individual is to do your best to stay organized and get your act together. Uh, individuals are, a, uh, are the first line of defense here. So, you know, there's things your company can do to help you. Uh, there's things the services you use can do to help you. But ultimately, the best thing you can do is to help yourself by, you know, protecting your environment and doing whatever is in your power. Absolutely. Well, thank you both for joining me today for our webinar. Um, I've learned a lot of things. It's been very informational and hopefully our audience will take away um, some great tips as well. So thank you very much, both of you. Thank, thank you. you.